Welcome to Sensational Living with Liliana. I hope you are having a great week. I certainly have. I've uh, had this is my third video today. I did two for the clinic for CancerTutor.com, so I uh, have have a look out for those as well. They should be on my website pretty soon. But we're going to make a, a very unusual. Actually, I'm kind of making it up as we go along. I was thinking, gosh, it's Thanksgiving next week. And uh, my patients were asking me for some vegetarian uh, uh, recipes. So I thought, well, gee, you know, Thanksgiving's not about vegetarian. I mean, when I was a, a, a vegetarian, I remember making a tofu turkey, but since soy is such an absolute no, hormonal disruptor, I wouldn't even think about eating tofu at all. So I started trying to get creative. In fact, in the car, I thought to myself, well, what is everybody's favorite? I mean, for me, it's always the mashed potatoes and gravy. So what I thought I'd do is I'd do a really low-carb um, cauliflower mashed potatoes, and then you'll have an option if you want to fool your family this Thanksgiving and let them think that it's real mashed potatoes. Um, I, we're going to use one uh, russet potato, organic, that we're going to leave the skin on it so it'll still have the skin so they won't know the difference that, you, that three quarters of the carbohydrates are going to completely out because we're going to use cauliflower. So let's go ahead and start that and get that going here. And so you can see here that um, I'm going to chop the cauliflower pretty darn small because I'm going to put it through the Cuisinart. And so we want to make sure that uh, it blends up really, really nicely. So, And this is just basically a whole cauliflower. Oftentimes when I want to um, do this very quickly, I'll just throw the whole thing and let it steam itself. But for cooking purposes and time purposes, we're going to go ahead and cut it up into little, small, little pieces here. And I cut the stems in it and everything. I use all parts of it. I take all the green part off, so I'm going to go ahead and put that on now. So you can see it's in small little pieces, not too small, because I want to keep it slightly al dente so it doesn't get too mushy, because as you well know, cauliflower has gives off a lot of water. That's why it's so fabulous, because uh, the water content uh, not only... Uh, it makes it really low carbohydrate, but it actually uh, gives you that sensation of fullness as well. So I'm going to go ahead and take this potato. So we're going to fool them and they're going to think it's real potato. And I'm going to go ahead and leave the skin on. Now I scrubbed it really good, took all the little dirt off of it. And um, I usually use grapeseed extract and I probably put like maybe 20 drops um, in a bowl. And then I wash all my vegetables with it so we can get all the little critters off of it. So I'm going to go ahead and just set that right there. Now, we've got a lot of little things we're going to do. We're going to add a leek. Now, people sometimes don't even know what a leek really looks like, but as you can see here, there's a green part to the leek and a white. We're only going to use the white part of this leek. And so, again, this just gives it just a, a, a little bit more unique flavor. I'm just going to take the green off and then cut it right down the middle. Cut it into little, tiny little pieces. Because you want to make sure this one gets cooked really well because otherwise it gets very fibrous um, inside this dish here. So I'm going to go ahead and just push that down there a little bit. Push this over here a little bit. So the potatoes, try to get the, actually the potatoes on the bottom. I already cooked some potatoes so it would make it a little easier. But I'd say put the potatoes on the bottom so that they cook because they take a little longer. So we got that going. I'm going to turn that up a little bit. All right. So I'm going to go ahead and um, do our vegetables. So what I thought would be kind of fun, so for those of you who are vegetarian and want to do a celebration, I thought this would be a really pretty presentation. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use a mandolin. Now mandolins are fabulous, but they're dangerous, okay, so you've got to be really careful with these little, this guy here. And, um, and pay attention, so you really can't be distracted when you're doing this. And so what I love about this is that it, it really cuts it to the finest that you possibly could cut any vegetable. And so you're just going to just give it a little slide across. So it's fantastic. Love it. Then again, I say pay attention when you start getting down a little closer. I just kind of stop. And then again with the zucchini. So as I was fantasizing about what to make and I had all these ingredients in front of me, I thought, well, maybe I'll stuff the portobello mushroom and and then uh, use the zucchini and the, and the uh, eggplant and stuff it. And then I thought, well, you know, we kind of want to stretch and make everything look really pretty. So I decided to grill it instead. So I'm going to go ahead and um, put, I've got it some already chopped up and ready to go over here. 
We're only gonna do a little bit of batch, so I'll do those later. This is coconut amino acids. I love it because there's no soy in this at all. I do like using tamari, which is great, and that is a gluten-free. This one has just a little teeny bit sweeter taste to it, so it's gonna kind of give it some different flavors as we're trying to create uh, all the sensation that Thanksgiving gives us. Sweet, it gives us savory, and um, we're gonna try to mimic a little bit of that here. So I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of olive oil on that, dress it up a bit. And I just like to keep this marinating for maybe like, let's just say, really only five minutes. You don't need to marinate it much longer because these are really thin, but you wanna make sure that you coat them really nicely here because we're gonna grill them. And really they're gonna take just minutes to do, which is really nice. So I'm gonna just let those sit there for a moment. Get this thing down. Okay. So this is a portobello mushroom. Now these are really porous, and so you, I don't tell, I don't wash them underneath the water or put them in the bowl with the grapeseed extract because it will really soak up too much of the water. So I just get a little paper towel, I wipe it down, I take out the center of it because we don't need that. Now normally, if I was just going to do a really good stuffing here, I might just keep it uh, raw, stuff it, and then put it in the oven. But today I decided to do it a little bit different. So we're going to go ahead and put this set up this here now again these are really big mushrooms so I do them one at a time often because you know as you can see here they're not going to fit into this great big pan now one of the things that's really important is that uh, since I'm a big component of using uh, fat as a clean source of fuel I want to try to not adulterate the oils that I use as much as possible so just a little teeny bit of spray here instead of using butter which I love but again, we want to just maybe use that butter nice and raw onto the cauliflower so that that could be a better usable fuel. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the lid on that. It's going to throw out a lot of water in it. That water, I can utilize it for the gravy that I'm going to make that will go along over the mashed potatoes. So we're going to let that cook there for just a moment. This pan is going good here, so I'm going to go ahead and start the grill here. So again, these are really nice and thin, so really they're going to take a second to do, which is really fun. So when my patients tell me they don't have time to cook, literally you're just gonna watch how this meal comes together so quickly while all the other dishes are also in marks as well. So there we go, so let's just give that a little roll. Now I don't wanna overcook these because then they're gonna get too soft and funky. I wanna keep them a little bit crisp because I'm thinking that I wanna be a little creative and even do something that I've never done before just because I was thinking about it. I can stuff these little vegetables um, instead of the portobello mushrooms. So just to make it a little funner, I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn these over. So you can see how quickly they're cooking. Beautiful. Excellent. Let's have a look at this little portobello mushroom. Well, it might help if we turn the heat on a little bit more, so let's get that going. So we'll let that go. Now we're gonna make a gravy. Now normally, um, of course, we would use the wonderful drippings of the turkey, but what we do actually is we make a really rich broth about two days prior to Thanksgiving so that we can use that uh, bone broth to make our gravy because everyone loves gravy. That's always usually the first thing uh, that is, you know, most sought, af sought after and the first thing that's gone. And so, you know, we've known that by experience. You know, I've said before, I have 10 brothers and sisters. Of course, not all of them are coming, but we still have probably a good 20 people that come. And so we want to make a lot of good gravy. Today we're going, I'm going to demonstrate how to make a gravy. And then of course you can, uh, if you're using a uh, uh, broth next week when you want to use your turkey you can just add that instead of the vegetable broth that I'm going to be adding today okay so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to take these off so they're still a little they're still a little crisp but they're going to be they're they're, they're soft enough for me to be able to uh, mold them any way or which way I want them to go so I'm going to go ahead and take those off now See how nice and pliable they are, but they're still uh, not completely life lifeless. Lifeless. <laughs> it was really interesting. Uh, my husband said when he was in China that 
well, obviously they're very respectful in China. Everything is very uh, custom oriented. And, and he said that when they would eat their meals that they would bring them the most fat on their plate and all of the uh, the artists were looking at it like, oh, this is just a little bit too much for my taste. But it was actually an honor and that's just how much that they recognize the value of fat. But of course, good fat, I mean, that's what really you call farm to table. They are actually killing whatever that they're eating to cook. They're picking whatever they're picking to cook as well. So it's about as fresh as you could possibly get it. But sometimes it's a little hard for people who aren't used to eating those kind of foods palate it. But it was a wonderful cultural experience. So he wouldn't have missed it for the world. The people were absolutely gracious, wonderful. And he got some sensational paintings out of it, that's for sure. All right, get that going. Let's see how our portobello mushroom's doing here. I'm gonna turn it over there. Now I'm gonna just put a little teeny bit of this broth here again. You know, I don't wanna to use too much oil. So I always recommend to my patients that we can use broth instead of oil. So here, if I just add a little teeny bit, it's gonna give it a nice steam. I'll just put the lid on it. It'll just soak right up into that uh, portobello mushroom, keep it nice and moist. And this is what I tell my patients also, is that when they wanna heat up their leftovers, even meat, instead of throwing it in the microwave and completely de you know, devitalizing their food, is just to put a little teeny bit of broth into a pan, let it bubble up and put uh, just the way we, we, you just saw it, nice and hot, throw the meat in there, put the lid on, and you can sear it beautifully and it'll still maintain all of its moisture and you're not going to have irradiated it with the microwave. There's no microwave in my house and I got a double oven and uh, my daughter came home, she was, mom, where's the microwave? And I said, well, honey, we don't use the microwave. She's a little, I do that to, you know, melt my chocolate chip cookies or when I want to put it on ice cream. And I said, well, guess what? You can start using the double broiler. So we don't have it in the house. It's not a temptation for us to use it, but it would be for my daughter. So I definitely don't want to expose her to those toxins. All right, so this is beautiful. We've got that roll in there. Let's see how that portobello mushroom's doing. Looking pretty good. So you can see this is getting a little pliable here. I made a couple of them earlier just to kind of demonstrate alongside here. And uh, I'm gonna keep this one a little firmer. This is probably gonna take the longest here, but not so, because it's cauliflower. Again, we don't wanna have it over cooked because then it'll be too mushy because it lets out so much water. All right, let me go ahead and pull these over. So I hope everybody's getting organic turkeys this year. I know I saw Trader Joe's had some beautiful pre-range organic turkey. So I'm gonna pick mine up on Sunday. And um, so it's really nice to see that the stores are really being a lot more conscious about delivering us food that's actually not adulterated with hormones and uh, antibiotics. So I really am glad to live in America. Unfortunately, though, we are the old, one of the only countries uh, that are still using GMO because China doesn't use GMO, uh, Europe doesn't use GMO, uh, Russia doesn't use GMO, but for some reason, we can't get the lobbyists to really understand the problems of GMO, and we probably know why that's happening. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and take this out. I'm going to go ahead and set it over here. And since I'm gonna use the same pan to make the um, gravy, I'm just gonna give this a toss real quick of water. Okay. You don't need any extra res residue. Turn it down really low because now I'm going to make a roux. All righty. So I've got some ghee here. I like using ghee, especially when I'm doing high heat because it's not gonna burn on me. Ghee's wonderful because again, I love butter because it, uh, it feeds the butyric acid in the gut which makes us have a better biome. But what's beautiful about ghee, it doesn't have any casein in it at all. They've taken all the whey out of it. So it's got a super high heating point, which is really nice. So I'm gonna put a generous amount there. 
So I'm gonna use some coconut flour. You can use just gluten-free flour, whatever you like to use. I'm gonna let that get a little hotter. Actually, before I do that, let me not get ahead of myself, let me go ahead and add some beautiful red onions. So I'm gonna kind of use them as I would in the place of a shallot. And let's throw some garlic in there. Make it fun. I'm, sometimes I start doing things and I go, I don't even know what I'm going to use them for, but I know I'm going to use them. <laughs> That's what I'm doing today. Just having fun. All right, how are we doing here? So I want you to see how quickly everything's made. And as I was saying in one of my lectures this week, is if we started living how our parents did and really started uh, modeling after the 1950s and beyond that, we would be a lot healthier. We would be avoiding the foods that are laden with all of the um, chemicals and we'd really get in the kitchen and really start utilizing fresh food the way it should be used. So again, the cure is in the kitchen. These are looking pretty good. They're pretty al dente, which is really pretty nice. So I'm just gonna stir them up a little bit here. That's awesome. There's nothing like the smell of onions and garlic. I don't know about you, that's it's like brings me right back home instantaneously. My mother was a fabulous cook, and that was one thing. If we wouldn't wake up with our eyes burning from her cooking chili, you know, uh, it was the fumes just wafting in and, you know, directing us straight to the kitchen. She was one of those mothers that woke up at 4 35, 30 in the morning and had you know, homemade tortilla and ready to go. And we were there with our stick of butter as they came off the grill. And uh, so we were really lucky. We got introduced to food at a really, you know, uh, early age in regards to the love of it. But I'd have to say that, you know, my parents, one thing that was really cool is that they never monitored our eating. They let us eat as much as we want. We had lived on a big ranch. So we'd go and take food from the kitchen, go outside, make a fort, make a teepee, and put some wood out there, and start playing house and cooking. And next thing you know, we'd have a whole group of our friends over. We'd be selling eggs for one cent. <laughs> they say, wait a minute, wait a minute, you can't do that. <laughs> so we, 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 we all had a love of cooking really early on. And of course, what's the, what's the love of cooking if you can't share it with people? So that was always fun. I'm surprised. Nowadays, the fire department, the fire department would come down, we would probably get fined. <laughs> I remember coming from the country, and I don't know what I was thinking. I thought I had all this paper, and I wanted to burn it. And I thought, well, why not? I'm just gonna put a little bucket right out in front of my house. I'm gonna take all my paper that I that I you know are all important document type things that I don't want to throw in the town, trash. And I started burning, and I was out there, and pretty soon the fire department came. They said, hey, ma'am, don't you know you can't do that? And I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm sorry, sir. I'm from the country. And I got away with it. <laughs> it was pretty funny. <laughs> uh, so everything has to be humorous in life. So I'm going to go ahead and turn those off. Those are ready to rock and roll. Mmm, there's nothing like I said, the smell of those onions. So I'm going to go ahead and transfer them over here because we are going to use them in just a moment. Now I'm going to have some flavor here, which is going to be really nice when I put my ghee in here again and make my roux. This is the simplest thing to do. Again, I'm going to take about, I'd say I've got two tablespoons here, so I'll probably use a tablespoon and a half. I was telling, I was talking about today, I was talking in the video today that, you know, do no harm, like hypocrisy says, right? So you could throw everything in there and you probably really aren't going to do yourself any harm. And some of you say, well, how about raw eggs? And I said, well, you know, I mean, I love raw eggs, but what I do is I uh, break them in a bowl. If the yellow part of the eggs is nice and uh, sticks together really well and the, and the clear part of the egg sticks together really well, that is a fresh egg that you could use raw. But if it falls apart, like the other day, I, I was uh, making some mayonnaise and it fell apart and I thought, oh no, you know, and I had to throw it all away because I had one good and one bad. So pay attention because you can get eggs that are not that fresh sometimes. So you can see here, this is good enough for a roux. I'm going to go ahead 
and I'm going to put some. So again, if I were making a really good bone broth, I would be using bone broth instead of vegetable broth. And a lot of times what I do is I also put chopped up mushrooms in here as well. But since we're going to put this over mushrooms, we really don't need to do that. Sometimes gravy can be a little finicky and get kind of lumpy on you. So I always say take it off the stove, give it a lot of love, pay attention to it. Don't try to have 20 things going on at the same time. And you can pretty much get it to do what you want it to do. See there? No lumps, no bumps in this. Now, um, you've heard me say that I'm not into dairy, which I'm not, but the only dairy that I do use is the grass-fed butter, the ghee, and organic whipping cream. So I'm gonna be adding that to this as well. So it's gonna be phenomenal. Great taste. So this is not a vegan dish. This is a vegetarian dish. So a lot of vegetarians still use eggs and they use dairy as well. So this is definitely fits their criteria. So again, if you have to take it off the stove, and you know, this takes a little muscle. So if you're haven't been working out, you're gonna feel it tomorrow. <laughs> We're gonna to try to mimic the flavors of Thanksgiving. Sage and thyme and a little rosemary. So I'm gonna throw those in there just to kind of give it some oomph. Because, you know, usually when I'm doing broth, I've got all those herbs in there and it mixes in and some get in the, uh, some get in the broth, so they're just really quite nice. And if you really go wrong and can't get the lumps out, you can throw it in the blender and it'll be perfect, okay? <laughs> when in doubt, you got the blender. There has been some times where I've had to do that, so like I said, you can always fix most of the mistakes in the kitchen. And so I turn the heat down a lot here because if it's too high, you'll definitely get some lumps, so we don't want that. So I'm going to go ahead and throw a little bit of these um, garlic and a little onions in there just to give it some more flavor. We'll put half the mixture in there. So that's about two tablespoons of red onion and about a good tablespoon of garlic. They can see there it's getting really nice. I'm going to go ahead and put a dab of sage in there just to give it that Thanksgiving feel to it. A little bit of thyme. We all need more time, right? <laughs> These days are getting short so quickly. I'm telling you, I feel like I wake up in the dark and I come home in the dark. <sighs> Can't wait to turn the fireplace on. So if it just gets a little colder, then we'll be pretty good. All right. A little bit of rosemary. Why not? Not too much. We don't want to overdo it. Throw a little bit of black pepper. If you are having immunity issues like cancer, I don't recommend black pepper. Gotta have a little salt, of course. You know, salt, good salt is important. In fact, it's so important for the functionality of the sodium potassium pump. And uh, a lot of patients, when they have adrenal dysfunction, I, I recommend that they take a half a teaspoon or a teaspoon of Tibetan salt. Uh, that's the best one in uh, eight ounces of water with a little bit of lemon, and that'll perk up their adrenal glands. So I have them do it twice a day, in the morning and then mid-afternoon. Right around three o'clock, your adrenals start to crash. Your adrenals are your flight and fright hormone. So by three o'clock, everybody's pretty much, oh, you know, the, the most stressful part of their days, right, has got, has usually passed and they're trying to get out of work as quick as they can. Okay, so you can see here, this is still not the consistency I want because I, I want to put a little cream in there. So I still want to thin it up a little bit, but this is exactly the consistency that I'm gonna utilize before I add the cream to it. So I'm going to go ahead and taste it and see how we go here. Mmm, tastes like Thanksgiving to me. Wow, excellent. Okay, let's add a little cream. 
organic whipping cream. This is what it looks like and you can see it says no carbohydrates and no protein. So this is ketogenic if you can believe it or not. And of course your brain loves it. It says, oh my God, this is such a dopamine wonderful food. This is how I would use cream. I don't drink it per se. I might put a little bit in some tea for a real treat or I might, you know, as, as you can see here, I use it like this. Isn't that nice? So that's gonna be yummy. This is why everyone likes coming to my house for mashed potatoes. <laughs> my stepson said to my husband, he says, well, she's making her mashed potatoes and gravy. We say, oh yeah, we're making, I'm coming. And I said, ah, just for the potatoes. <laughs> so again, you don't want it too thick because the potatoes are already thick. You want it to be really kind of sensual over those potatoes. That looks really good. So I'm just gonna let it sit there. Okay. How are we doing? Everything is off, we're off here. Um, well, I'm gonna go ahead and throw a few more of these on here, but that's enough to do my little demonstration. But let's see if we don't burn the house down. <laughs> All right, throw these last little ones on there. They escaped me somehow. And these ones, we'll make for a little later on this evening when more of a crowd comes. All right, perfect. So let's go over to our potatoes now. And so I'm going to go ahead and lift this up out of the water here. Just dump this. All right. So before I do something, before I do that, what I'm going to do is I am going to take this little pan here and I'm going to throw the rest of this tea here. This is where I'm experimenting right now, just having fun. I don't even know what I'm going to do next, but let's, let's have fun. So I'm going to go ahead and put, so what I've done is I've um, chopped, I've soaked the walnuts and I've chopped them really fine because obviously when you're a vegetarian, you got to have some protein. So uh, what I've done is I soaked my walnuts for about five hours to release the enzyme inhibitor, and then I threw them in the Cuisinart to just give them a really fine, nice texture. And so what I thought I would do originally was stuff the portobellas, but I'm gonna stuff it with the, with the uh, cauliflower mash. But I think I'm gonna play with it and do something different with those uh, little vegetables. So let's go ahead and put some spinach in there. Now we just kind of want it wilted. We don't really want to have it too overcooked here because I'm just going to utilize that as kind of like a little stuff in there. This is going to be fun. Experiments are always fun. My husband says, well, at least your exper experiments always taste good. <laughs> I said, oh, thanks. You're my, you're my best fan. <clears throat> So you can see here, I just want to really just give it a beautiful little glaze. I don't want to overcook it. I just want to just put it together like that. I'm going to turn it off. That was it. I'm going to throw the rest of these onions in there. I'm going to throw some walnuts in there. I'm going to throw some parsley in there too. Parsley is great for the kidneys. So again, we're always looking to bolster up a vegetarian protein. So this is, again, I like to use nuts and seeds. They're great. See, so if you don't pay attention, you can get a little bit of crispy, crispy carcinogenic. <laughs> so don't do too many things at one time. <laughs> All right, let's play here. All right. So let's have a taste. Mmm, all right. Now we're, now we're cooking with gas like my dad used to say. <laughs> That's nice. I'm just gonna go ahead and add just a little bit of thyme in there as well, just to give it a little punch. I'm gonna turn off that gravy before it explodes on me. So there we go, isn't that nice? Now for fun, I'm gonna give this a little swirl. 
remember to turn off your gravy because you don't want it to get too caramelized on you. Let's throw a little bit of this vegan cheese in there. I think this will be really fun. Okay. I think this mixture, this is what I was going to do to stuff the mushrooms with. I still might, but I think it'll be kind of fun to do that. Let's have a taste of that. Mmm. I'm going to let Landy taste afterwards and see what she thinks. All right. Let's keep that like that. I'm going to just pretend like these aren't here. No. <laughs> Put those over there. All right. I'm so happy here. Gotta have a Cuisinart. Cuisinart in every, every, every woman's home, every man's home, who's ever the chef. All right, so let's go ahead and throw this in here. Honestly, People are not going to know the difference if you throw one, and if you want to keep it totally ketogenic, don't throw the potato in there. I 99% of the time, I never throw the potato in there, but what I was just trying to do is just to give everyone an idea that if they want to try cauliflower and still maintain their sense of dignity for everyone else that wants real potatoes, throw a potato in for fun. All right. Let's get down the roll. generous amount of this grass-fed butter. I'm going to throw some great salt, Celtic salt, a little bit of black pepper again. If you have immunity issues, you probably won't want to add the black pepper. And again, cauliflower, as you well know, it's not super salty like celery and things like that are. So sometimes you have to be a little teeny bit more generous with the salt with these mashed potatoes. But look at that. Does that look anything different than mashed potatoes? Awesome. So taste it to make sure that the leeks have really blended nicely in there because they can become a little on the fiber side. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Love it. Give it a whirl, little whirl just to get the butter in there. Now, I bought chives today, but I went crazy trying to find them once I got home. Sometimes things just get lost in my refrigerator as it's packed to the tilt. So a lot of times I would just add chives to this and oh, it's absolutely fantastic. But tonight we're just gonna go without. Okay, so let's play. Let's take this and let's have some fun. Let's see what this is gonna look like. All right, where's my little spoon here? So why not, right? Doesn't that look fun? And yummy at the same mm -hmm. time? Mm -hmm. My husband doesn't like eggplant, but I love it. So needless to say, it's not something we have on the menu all the time. This is Japanese eggplant, so it's even nicer. Kind of like sushi, isn't it? <laughs> Pretty fun. A new invention! Yay! <laughs> I love it. 
This is for Gigi. Gigi's the one who asked me for a vegetarian recipe. So Gigi, this one is for you. Ooh, this is gonna be so good, I'm so excited. Look at that. Mm-mm. Mm-mm-mm. Okay. Set that over here. Let's check out our portobello mushrooms. Let's give it a second more. We'll give it one more minute. So what we're having for Thanksgiving is we're going to uh, barbecue our turkey. My sister's gonna make a turkey at home because there's gonna be a lot of us. I'm gonna do the cauliflower mashed potatoes with a incredible bone broth. We're going to do some rusted, um, roasted uh, um, Brussels sprouts and we're going to do, put, probably put a little apple in there and I don't know what we're gonna, we're gonna have a lot of fun with those. Big beautiful salad, some green beans and uh, probably I'll do some yams, cut them in half, roast them as well. So we're gonna have quite the feast. I'm not quite sure what we're gonna have for dessert but uh, it'll be gluten free whatever it's gonna be, that's for sure. <laughs> okay, let's bring it out. You see we got a little bubble on there, which is nice. You got a little brown on there. So that's what we want, just to give it some fun. Let's pull that right in the middle. Awesome. Let's take this fabulous gravy, I mean a mashed potato. great or what? Now let's take some of this wonderful gravy. Mm -mm. John says he's getting hungry. <laughs> Is he watching? <laughs> yeah. Good. We're going to let Landy try this. Landy's awesome. She's one of my best friends and helping me with all of these shows. She's absolutely incredible. So look at that. Is that great? Oh my God. I know. I'm so excited. Now let's just put this for a little fun. We'll just throw a little parsley on top. Now that is beautiful. And this is a wonderful vegetarian meal. It was easy to do. It'll have a ton of flavor. I'm going to go ahead and pick one of these up because I can't take it any longer. Have a taste of it. Mmm. Mmm. That is so good. Oh my god. You gotta try this. Mmm. Let's try this portobello. I should have taken a picture of it first, but I can't <laughs> take it. All right. Mmm. You will not miss a turkey when you eat this, okay? Have a great day. And have a fantastic Thanksgiving. And don't forget to have many sensational moments until I see you again.